Hi friend, welcome to this really gentle yoga flow. Um, I invite you to come onto your mat with um, just a sense of ease today, not force anything really hard. This isn't a very intense practice, but a really great one that you can do in the evening right before bed, after a long day of work winding down, or even to start your day if you're just looking for something gentle. Um, if you have a yoga block, uh, we're going to use it for a couple of poses today, but you don't have to have it. You don't um, can use without it. But if you do, grab it, hop onto your mat, and let's get started. We're going to begin today's class in a supported bridge pose, or just lying on your black back if you don't have a block. If you do have a block, slide it underneath your sacrum, the very bottom of your spine. Plant the soles of your feet on the mat, and just begin to surrender deeply into this pose. Close your eyes, deepen your breath. Push aside any distractions or worries going on through your mind. And just bring your thoughts and your attention and your heart onto your mat, into the presence of God. The theme that I invite you to focus on today for our practice comes out of the book of Exodus. Um, chapter 16, right after the Israelites escape Egypt in this huge miraculous way, right? Like God parts the ocean so that thousands and thousands of people could cross through to the other side safely into the promised land that he had for them. But we all know the story. They're too afraid. They don't go into the promised land and they end up wandering the desert for 40 years. I'm going to pick up the story in Exodus chapter 16. Um, it says, The whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. First of all, I want to stop there and just point out, these people were slaves in Egypt slaves and they're saying oh let's go back there we have food that's way better than dying out here they totally forget this huge miracle God has just done in their lives and they long for that old comfortable life that life of slavery can you put yourself in the story and see yourself as an Israelite grumbling about your current circumstances not realizing the huge things that God has brought you out of all right Keep moving on. Then the Lord said to Moses, verse 4, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I might test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Um, then Moses said, when the Lord gives you in the morning meat to eat and in the, in the evening meat to eat and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling. All right. So what the Lord does is he says, he's going to provide manna, which is bread and meat in the form of quail every single day for them. Manna in the morning, quail in the evening, enough for each day. Don't go and collect more for tomorrow or the week ahead unless it's the sixth day in which case you're not going to collect for the sabbath day so you'll collect twice that day um, but you just collect what you need for each day we're going to skip ahead here um, to verse 20 um, it says but they did not listen to moses some left part of it till the morning and the manna bred worms and stank and moses was angry with them Morning by morning, they gathered it, each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. The Lord provided every single day for what they needed every single day. But how often do we treat um, time with God, whether it's worship, whether it's yoga on our mat, as if we were um, these Israelites, afraid that God's not going to show up tomorrow and trying to store up more for today? Afraid that the connection we feel with God isn't going to last us into tomorrow, so we have to like hoard it while we can today because we don't know if he's going to show up and be there tomorrow. Let's just point that out in our lives for what it is. That's the spirit of an orphan, someone who doesn't know their father, someone who doesn't know if their provider is going to show up and meet their needs. But friends, we are not orphans. We are children of God. 
He has brought us out of slavery and given us new life, and He provides for our needs every single day. Lord, I thank you so much that you are so faithful. God, would you forgive us for forgetting over and over that you are a God who meets needs, that you are a God who doesn't just lead us out in the wilderness to, wilderness to abandon us, but you show up day in and day out. You comfort us. You heal us. You feed us. You protect us. You nourish us. God, will you open our eyes and our heart to see what you are doing right here, right now, and use that to bring heaven on earth, not hoard it and store it away for ourselves, but use it to nourish ourselves and nourish the world around us. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have the block underneath you, roll off to the side and pull it out and hug your knees into your chest here. Really just squeeze them in as you exhale fully. And then lie back down. Um, position your legs over your hips here so your shins are parallel with the mat, legs angled at 90 degrees. We're going to take some really slow um, yogi bicycles here, just a little bit of core work, nothing super intense. Plant your arms on the mat alongside of you and just gently, very slowly, begin to pedal your legs. Big, deep circles nice and slow as you do. Don't hold your breath, but keep breathing into it. Be present in this moment. See what God has for you in this moment. Good, two more breaths here. And then hug your knees into your chest and roll your way up to a seat. Once you get to the top of your mat in a seated position, take your right ear, Bend it over to your right shoulder. Take your left arm behind your back and just feel the stretch in your neck here. Roll your chin into your chest and then take your left ear to your left shoulder, right hand behind your back. Letting go of the tension that you might be holding there. And then let your head roll heavy behind you. And on your own breath, move through some of these neck rolls, holding and breathing in those places that feel tight. God led the Israelites out of an impossible situation in a miraculous way to a new place. And even when the Israelites rejected the big promise God had for them, He still provided. He still loved. He was still faithful. Because that's who our God is. He's a good, good Father. Bring your head back to center. Scrunch your shoulders up to your ears. Scrunch your face up. And then, ah. Oh, with an audible exhale, release it all out. Let's do this one more time. On an inhale, scrunch your shoulders up, scrunch your face up, and then uh, let it go. Good. Take your legs and spread them out long in front of you. Um, not super wide here, but maybe about 45 degrees to a place that feels comfortable so you're not rounding your spine so far forward, but your sit bones can remain planted firmly on your mat. Good. Sit up tall here. Rooting your tailbone down, reaching the crown of your head high. And just breathe into the stretch. If you'd like to crawl your fingertips forward a little bit to find a bit more depth, you can. But using your breath to make more space in any tightness that you're feeling. Take your right arm, bring it alongside the inner right thigh. Lift your left arm up and over for a side stretch here. Good. Return to center and switch sides. Left arm along the inside of your left thigh. Right arm up and over here. Good. Return to center. Bring the soles of your feet together and draw them in towards your hip as close as you can before your knees really start butterflying up. Wrap your hands around your feet on an inhale, grow tall, and then on an exhale, begin to draw your heart forward, stretching here. Good, make your way back up to center, soles of the feet on the mat, knees bent, 
Cross your right ankle over your left thigh here. Bend, press that right knee away from you as you draw that foot closer to your face. Taking a nice stretch here along the IT band on your right side. Good, and then send both legs long in front of you. Shake them out and just switch sides. Left ankle crosses over right thigh. Press that left knee away from your face as you walk your right thigh closer in. However much you need to, to deepen the stretch. Good, and slowly release. And make your way onto all fours. Knees stacked under hips, wrists stacked under your shoulders. And once you get there, just take a few cat-cow movements on your own breath. So inhale, reach your heart forward, tilt your tailbone up, and then exhale, round your spine, tucking your chin into your chest for cat. Inhale for cow. This time as you exhale for cat, round all the way down to a child's pose. Your inhale fuels you back up for cow. Exhale for cat, down to child's pose. Come back up to center. Press your palms into the mat. Straighten your elbows. Begin to tuck your toes. Lift your hips. Straighten your knees. Coming to downward facing dog. Really gentle here. Pedal your heels. Maybe sway your hips from side to side. Just finding a little bit of movement in this down dog. Let's all lift our heels, bend our knees, and draw those hips farther back as we press our hands into the mat. Draw your tailbone back, and then begin to lower your heels and straighten your knees. Good. Look to your hands. Walk your feet up to meet them, and just hang here in forward fold. Maybe there's a slight bend in your knee. Maybe you sway gently from side to side. Inhale, lift halfway up, reach your heart forward, just like we did in cow pose, but length through your spine. Exhale, release. Root down, rise all the way up, stretching your arms up overhead. Exhale, bring your palms to your heart. Close your eyes. Connect with your breath here. Ask yourself, ask the Holy Spirit to show you, do I really trust that God will provide what I need today? Do I trust that he'll be there for me tomorrow? Do I trust that he will be there for me the next day and the next season? Can I trust him with my dreams and my hopes? And if the answer to all of those isn't yes, if it is, you're a saint. <laughs> But I struggle with these doubts all the time, and I'm sure you do too, so let's bring them into the light. Let's acknowledge that part of our spirit still thinks that we're orphans left to die in the wilderness. Instead, let's tell our hearts, remind ourselves, look up to heaven, look inside, look around us, and see that God is here. He's not leaving us. Good. Stretch your arms up overhead. Reach your left hand behind you, back of hand to your low back. Right arm reaches up to the ceiling. And then with an exhale, lead with your heart. Reach that arm all the way down into forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. Stretch that right arm forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root down, rise all the way up. Stretch that right arm to the ceiling. And then turn your head to the left as you stretch that right arm down, around, and back behind you. Good. Head comes to center. This time, left arm up overhead. Exhale, leading with your heart. Trace a line along the wall in front of you with your left fingertips as you fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root down, rise all the way up. Stretching those fingertips to the ceiling and then spiral that left arm around your back as you turn your neck over to the right. Good. Turn your head back to center. Stretch both arms up overhead. This time fold forward both arms reaching long out in front of you. Inhale, lift halfway. Arms stretched out. Exhale, fold and release. 
Good, root down, rise all the way up, stretch those fingers up overhead, and then exhale, reach those hands behind you, interlace your fingers, palms touch. Inhale, open your heart up and draw those knuckles down to the mat as you open your shoulders, maybe gently lean back here. Opening your heart up to heaven. Okay, return to center, release your hands, stretch them overhead again, and let's fold back forward. Place your hands on the mat and step your left leg back for a lunge. Your hands will remain on the mat here and you can lower your back knee if you need to. But just notice how this pose changes when you begin to engage your back thigh, lifting that left kneecap. When you spiral your left thigh inwards, what happens when you bring that left heel over the ball of your foot or when it's angled back a little bit? Find strength and stability here as you plant your right hand on the mat. So I plant your left hand on the mat, right arm twists open as you open your heart and your shoulder and your chest over to the right side. Breathing into this twist. Good, return to center, lower your right arm down to the mat. If your back knee's not already on the mat, why don't you lower it down there? Bring your front knee back to your left knee, and let's just take child's pose here. Big toes touch, knees wide. Your arms can reach out long in front of you, forehead on the mat. Or you can sweep your arms around behind you. Maybe they grab your heels, placing one cheek of your face on the mat or the other. Or maybe you can even... If it feels good, slide your arms underneath your torso in between your legs for a different variation of child's pose. Find something that works for you, a place where you can close your eyes and just surrender. Let's skip ahead to the New Testament. Um, Jesus is here with his disciples in Matthew chapter 6. He um, tell, speaks to them about the Beatitudes, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he goes through and he, he sort of flips all of their um, Jewish expertise on its head. All of these disciples who know the law so well, who grew up in this culture, who, um, who knew this Old Testament law from Exodus and, and Numbers and Deuteronomy. And he says, he flips it on its head. He says, like, look, the Old Testament says do not murder. But I tell you, the second that you think a bad thought towards someone else, you've already committed murder. He says, look, the Bible says um, don't commit adultery. I say the second that you have a lustful thought towards somebody, you've committed adultery. So he like turns it all up on its head and says, look, it's not about what you do. It's about your heart. It's about your thoughts. It's about your inner life. And as you read these chapters, these first few chapters of Matthew, it can become really overwhelming. Like, oh my gosh, this is so impossible. How does anyone live this way? But then he says this, Matthew chapter 6, verses 30 through 34. And I think it mirrors um, this Old Testament story about the manna and quail so well, right? Impossible situation, but Jesus points them a, a way out, points them back to the Father and reminds them that even in impossible situations, he's faithful to help us. Matthew chapter 6, verse 30 through 34 in the message translation, it says this. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do his best for you? What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Verse 34 says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. We're going to return to this truth, but let's do a little bit more moving first. So press yourself up um, on, back onto all fours. This time, let's step our left foot forward. 
your right knee can remain on the mat or you can begin to tuck those back toes and lift your back knee, taking a low lunge on this left side. Hands can stay on the mat. And notice once again how you can how you can make this pose feel differently based on how you engage different muscles, how you situate that back heel. Can you open those shoulders and reach your heart forward as you lengthen your tailbone back? Can you spiral that back knee in, finding lift in that right thigh? Can you continue to breathe deeply here? And then plant that right hand on the mat as you twist open to the left side, feeling this really great stretch in your left hip. And can you breathe here, even when it's uncomfortable? Good, return back to center, place both hands on the mat. Step your left foot back to meet your right, either on all fours or in a plank position. Take a big inhale here, and then everyone, let's lower our knees, hugging your elbows into your ribs, lower onto your forearms. Good, so your elbows are under your shoulders, you might have to walk them forward a little bit. We are in cobra pose here, so engage your core to um, lower your hips down to the mat. Shoulders are back, heart reaches forward. Notice if you're trying to lead with your chin, if you are, draw that chin in and find length in the back of your neck. Holding here for three more breaths. Good. Press your hands into the mat, sink your hips back, finding child's pose again. Come up onto your hands. We're going to thread our right arm underneath our left armpit, rolling over onto our right shoulder. Left fingertips can stay here, or you can walk them over to the right corner of your mat, feeling an opening and a stretch in between your shoulder blades here. In impossible situations, when you feel like you're in the wilderness, or when you feel like living this God life, this life of generosity and grace and freedom is just so overwhelming, we can look to our Father, give our entire attention to what God is doing right now and not worry about what may or may not happen tomorrow because we know that our Father will help us deal with whatever hard things come up. We are not orphans. He gives us enough for today, and we must use what He gives us today in service of ourselves and in service of others. Return to center, and let's switch sides. Stretch your right arm out long. Thread that left arm underneath your right armpit. Crawl your right fingertips over to the left side, rolling over onto the left shoulder. Breathing here, connecting with your breath. Okay, return to center. Begin to straighten your arms, press your hands into the mat, tuck your toes, reach back for downward facing dog. Let this feel easy and natural. Take a couple of deep breaths here. And then reach your right arm, right leg long behind you. And come forward, hugging your knee into your chest and lay your right shin down on the mat, coming down for pigeon pose. So left leg straight behind you. Make sure you're not rolling onto your right hip here, but both hip points are pointing evenly forward. Good. Take an inhale here to grow tall, and then as you exhale, begin to fold forward to whatever degree feels good. When you get there, can you open your palms up to the ceiling, close your eyes, and surrender a little bit more. Good. Slowly press your way back up, plant your hands into the mat, tuck your back toes, and just stretch that right leg long behind you, maybe taking some circles with your knees, just finding some space and movement in that right hip. 
lower your right foot down to the mat and then stretch your left leg long behind you. Feeling that stretch all along the front of that left leg. And then come forward, hugging your knee into your chest and lay your left shin down on the mat. Crawling that right leg straight behind you. Situate yourself so that both hips are evenly pointing forwards. And then slowly begin to surrender forward. I want to read to you this quote from Julian Green. It says this, The story of the manna gathered and set aside by the Hebrews is deeply significant. It so happened that the manna rotted when it was kept. And perhaps this means that all spiritual reading, which is not consumed by prayer and works, ends by causing a sort of rotting inside of us. You die with a head full of fine sayings and a perfectly empty heart. Begin to press yourself back up. And let's just roll onto our left hip here. Stretch both legs forward and shake them out. On an inhale, root down through your sit bones. And as you exhale, fold forward just gently here. Knees can be bent. Friends, I don't want us to be people who just go to church and hear nice things or read a Bible because we're told to, but it never changes us and it never changes the world around us. I don't want us to die with lots of nice sayings, but an empty heart. Let's be people who use what God gives us every single day, who come to him asking for more and letting that change us and change the world. Press yourself back up. And we're gonna take Shavasana here. If you're near a wall, I invite you to take legs up the wall for Shavasana. Um, so just slide your hips uh, alongside the wall. Using your arms, lower your upper body down to the mat as you reach one leg and then both legs up onto the wall. Scooting your hips a bit closer as you need to. There's really no graceful way to get in this pose. So don't worry about how you look. It's how yummy it feels once you get there. Wherever you are, roll your shoulders open. Open your palms up to the ceiling. Close your eyes. And begin to let go. Let go of any tension still holding in your hips. Let go of um, any squinting that your eyes are doing. Soften your forehead. Soften the space around your mouth. Let your tongue fall off the roof of your mouth. And just ask God, what is it he has for you today? For you and your heart and for the people around you. Lord God, I pray that we would be men and women who know that we are your children, that we're not abandoned, we're not forgotten, we're not orphans, we're not just strangers walking around on the street picking up good sayings to put in an empty heart. Father, we want to be children who are transformed by your love, who don't try and hoard what you give us when you give it to us, but we let it change us and then we give it away. God, we want to see more of you in our lives and more of you in our world around us. And the only way we can do that is by living in the present moment, opening our eyes to what you're doing right here, right now. We thank you that you are alive and active and moving, and I thank you that we get to be a part of that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for practicing with me today, friend. I will see you back here on your mat soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching this slow flow yoga video. If you liked it, will you hit like below and leave a comment? I'd love to hear from you. And then make sure to head to carolinewilliamsyoga.com for more yoga videos, some devotional pieces that go along with the videos. You can find my blog there and you can sign up for my email list where you get awesome freebies and you can hear from me in your inbox every week. See you soon.